Hi guys. Um, okay, so I wanted to talk about today how uh, the liquid diet's going. I'm on day five, and I love how people say, "Oh, it gets easier." No, it doesn't. You're still starving. Don't kid yourself. <laughs> um, like for real. Um, you you do remain hungry. I say it definitely becomes more routine. Uh, for sure. Uh, it's kind of like, okay, I wake up, I have my protein shake, I get one ready for work. And make sure you pack your jello, because you could have unlimited amounts of jello. And um, make sure you pack a pudding, a sugar free pudding, sugar free jello, uh, your snacks uh, for the day. And off you go. And it's, it's hard for me. I work at a grocery store. I get to smell like chicken, food, whatever we cook up in the back, the bread. Oh, especially if I'm like working in the dairy where I'm right next to the bakery. <laughs> the bread kills me so much. I love, it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, like it doesn't get easier, but it's definitely worth it. Let me tell you why. Since June, before I started the liquid diet and I went down, I dropped to... From 2.30 to 2.18. Um, that's not a lot compared to what most people drop. I didn't really stick to their guidelines. I just kind of winged it. I did at first, which was great because I actually dropped all the way down to 2.19 from 2.30. Um, but then, you know, I don't keep up with writing the, down the calories, making sure it's only 1,500 a day, and that's it. And I kind of just wanted to do it on my own, see what I could do. And I know I can do it. I know I can. Um... But it's like it's the nibbles, the nibbling here and there that kind of like messed it up for me. So I did lose, you know, good. Got down to surgery weight. Uh, gained about five pounds <laughs> over Christmas just because we ate out one day. We had a big dinner. It's not like I ate a lot during the day, but we had like a big dinner. And I, you know, and it's just kind of stuff that I usually wouldn't eat every day. Uh I was eating. So, um, New Year's wasn't bad. You know, I didn't eat a lot. But, um, again, just things I normally wouldn't eat. And then my final meal. I really wanted to go to a Chinese buffet and just, like, get that done and over with. Eat it. You know, it's the only time. Or go to McDonald's and have chicken nuggets last night. You know, I really, really, really wanted to do that. I'm kind of upset that, you know, I didn't. But then again, I'm not because, well, let me tell you, it's day one of the diet was awful. I woke up with a serious migraine the next day. It was really, you know, it, it wasn't hard. It was just, I was grumpy for like two days, <laughs> at least two days. And it was bad. But anyway, benefits. Uh, in two days, I went from the five pound gain of 223 down to 217. So I lost a total of six pounds. So I lost what I gained and then some. <laughs> Which is great in two days of liquid diet. And then um, then I lost a couple more pounds a few days later. And now that I'm on my fifth day, I weighed myself this morning and I lost another pound. The only thing is it does fluctuate during the day. So like my highs goes up to 220. And back down again, um, which is probably like fluid intake, your body getting used to dumping fluids in it. So, uh, most likely that's where that comes from. Um, excuse me. So, yeah. Um, so I've been having two protein shakes a day, even though I'm supposed to have three. And it's mostly because I get so sick of having protein shakes. I really could force them now that, like, I try not to use the Shakeology. It's not. I know I sell it, and some people really do like it, especially since it's packed full of nutrients. But compared to the Profit It Works stuff, it tastes like shit. Shakeology tastes like shit. Profit so much better. <laughs> but the thing is, Profit's 100 calories. Shakeology is, I think, 150, something like that, and has more nutrients, so just a little more protein than, like, maybe a gram more. 
a protein than the profit. Um, so what I did, the profit now has like a, I don't know if it's gluten free or maybe it's soy. Anyway, whatever it was, I, I got, I'm ordering a new one for next month. Um, and hopefully my body still likes it because otherwise I'll be getting rid of it somewhere along the line. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, I lost a lot of weight so far. Like everyone's telling me, oh, I could see it. I could see you lost weight. And okay, good. Glad. I don't totally see it. I mean, I see my cheekbones. I got dimples. You know, I'm seeing more of an outline, which is good. You know, that I see, but it's like, I don't see it in the pants or anything. I guess a little bit, like, the stomach, actual area, I see is the fat I grew on top of it recently is going away now. So that's good. Um, but yeah, I don't believe people when they say it's, it gets easier. It just, it doesn't. Maybe it gets easier after surgery. Probably because you don't really put a whole lot in your stomach. You're eating like cups like this over the course of an hour or two. Um, so yeah, it's going. I can have decaf coffee. I found sugar-free Italian cream uh, creamer. And I'm glad they finally came out with a sugar-free one of those. I wish they would come out with a sugar-free cinnamon bun because that's my favorite. But the Italian cream is like my next choice. So I'm having that. Uh, I actually just had a little this morning. That was kind of like breakfast. Because I'm not, on the weekends when I don't work, I'm not a big breakfast eater. So I had that. And I waited a little bit, like around 10.30. I decided, okay, time to eat. So I made cream of chicken soup and I took out the chicken chunks. And I noticed the off-brand has like little tiny slivers in it. And they're hard to pick out. So I hope it's okay that I have a couple little slivers. I'm sure they'll pass right through pretty quick, I'm hoping. Um, but the Campbell's, you know, the Campbell's doesn't have the slivers. They have chunks, and not a whole lot of chunks either. And I like the taste of Campbell's better, definitely. Um, so I can have the Campbell's. So I had a Campbell's, and I made sure I had a protein shake to make sure I'm getting in my protein. Because that soup was only like 3 grams. Maybe six. Maybe it's three grams a serving. I probably had two servings worth. Um, because, like, you're hungry and it's liquid. So, there was that. Um, so, sugar-free jello. Basically, you eat that. It counts as a liquid. And you're eating it just because you're hungry. And you're eating. You need to feel like you're eating something. So, you eat sugar-free jello. <laughs> like, religiously. It's part of the routine. <laughs> it's basically all this is, is routine now. Like, all right, you want your peanut butter and jelly sandwich and your chicken nuggets, <laughs> and you close your eyes and pretend. That's all you can do. Get your routine in. Um, Sugar-free pudding. I had vanilla. <sighs> I feel like they forgot to put in the vanilla. Definitely doesn't taste good at all. Um, tastes like water mixed with flour. It's gross. <laughs> it's very gross. Um, so I got Boston cream, sugar-free Boston cream pudding, which is amazing. It does. It tastes really, really, really good. Um, now they never specified whether we could have chocolate pudding or not. They just said sugar-free. Um, which I thought was kind of weird because, you know, chocolate has caffeine in it. We can't have caffeine, but maybe it's just such a low dose that it doesn't even, like, register. I don't know. But as far as I can tell, they never said anything. The only thing, um, I said, like, low-fat or Greek yogurt, and it has to be plain or vanilla. Which is good, because I like plain, or I like vanilla, Greek yogurt. So I like I got the light and fit um, Greek vanilla. Had one of those. It was good. I also like the uh, the zero Greek yogurt or low fat yogurts, whatever they are. They're pretty good. 
Um, I had a couple of drinkable ones. So, there was that. Um, so yeah, my, my weight this morning was 214. That's only, I'm on day six of the liquid diet, which is great. It's, it's a struggle. You definitely, like, for the first few days, I woke up with such a bad migraine that would not go away. And it comes and goes now, but it's so slight, it's just a headache. It's not even a migraine. And a lot of times that tells me, okay, you need to eat something, whether it's jello or pudding, <laughs> or have a protein shake, um, when I get that little kind of buzz in my head <laughs> for the headache. Um, or fluids, maybe you're low on your fluids. So, uh... Definitely get those in. I bought some crystal light, so I have that, which is good because when you're wanting something sweet and you're so sick of jello and pudding, that's like the perfect thing to go to, especially before bed. I'm not much of a sweet eater, I'm definitely a salty eater, so that's why I like coming home and having cream of chicken soup. So, woo! Amazing. Um, oh, yeah, you can have as much tomato soup as you want. The only thing is, I don't like tomato soup unless I have like a grilled cheese with it. Well, I guess I can't have that now, can I? <laughs> So, there's that. I'm trying to see. Did they... Do I have the list with me? I have to have the list with me. It's got to be in here somewhere. Somewhere amongst my stuff. I know I have it. I know I copied it. Maybe I didn't take it out of the copier. Oh, come on. I know I had it here. People moving my stuff. Maybe it's over there. Hold on. One second. I have it in this book, at least. So yeah, your sugar-free clear wick liquids, water, sugar-free beverages such as Crystal Light um, or Propel Fitness Water, Boyan or broth, decaffeinated coffee and tea, flat decaffeinated diet soft drinks such as flattened diet ginger ale, which uh, I haven't had. Don't care to. It'll probably give me a headache. Uh, diet jello or pro source jello, which I'm assuming means sugar free. I you know I just kind of. You know, that really kind of confused me because at the nutritionist they said, oh, sugar free jello is great. Um, which I'm sure that's what they mean by diet jello and tomato or V8 juice. And that's basically, that's all the liquids that you can have, as many as you want. You can also have sugar free popsicles, but you can only have like one to three a day. Um, I guess because of the juice. It's a, I don't know, it's fruit. Um,. And then you can also have, like for your meals, you can have your, your shakes. And they say mixed, like the OptiFast shakes mixed with water. Um, I noticed that milk, they want you to use fat-free skim or skim milk. It has a lot of sugar in it. So I got the unsweetened almond vanilla. It's pretty good. And my aunt's going to bring me an unsweetened coconut because we don't have that here. In the sticks. <laughs> so, she's got to bring that out. Um, your premium protein shakes, whatever, you know. You can have carnation, instant breakfast, no sugar added. Um, it says no sugar added or powder packet mixed with 8 ounces of skin milk. So basically, yeah, you can have your protein shakes. As long as you're getting your protein shakes in. And it has to be non-fat milk. Oh, they even say non-fat milk powder can be added to shakes for additional protein of 6 grams per fourth cup. So you can add protein to your protein shakes, which is good, but I don't think I need to. I think I get enough in. I really, you know, they want you to get like 64 ounces of protein in. Um, the other paper kind of lists it a little better on what you're supposed to do. Um, so you get like about three in of those a day. And then you can have like up to three snacks a day. 
So your yogurt, which is not fat light, or your Greek yogurt, fat free. So I do like the light and fit. You can have vanilla or plain. Um, you can have no sugar added cocoa. I'm made with skim or 1% milk. Uh, sugar free pudding made with skim or 1% milk. Tomato or low fat cream soup. I'm assuming it's like, I don't know. See, I get those mixed up whether I could have, like, tomato soup. I think I was getting the tomato or V8 juice, but it's kind of like the same thing, and I don't really like it, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so one to three, and I probably go over that just a little, maybe by, like, a cup. Uh, just because I'm hungry. I don't know. I, didn't, I don't follow instructions very well. It's that ADD in me. <laughs> But now, I, let's see, like a normal day, protein shake, couple jellos, and a pudding for lunch. And then yesterday I did bring cream of chicken too, just because I was hungry, and a protein shake for lunch. Um, came home, had cream of chicken, and a yogurt. So yeah, I guess I am overdoing it a little bit on the snacks every once in a while. Um... It's not always like that. <laughs> Trust me, I don't always come home and be like, oh, I had cream of chicken all day long. Like today, I had cream of chicken and a protein shake, and I'll have another protein shake soon because it's like lunch time. Um, so once I start feeling hungry again, like, you know, you feel full, but you still want to munch on something real. Like, I almost feel like grabbing a loaf of bread and chewing it and spitting it out. <laughs> but I won't do that. Too much sugar. <laughs> and don't want to risk getting chunks in my belly. Which I think is, like, the most... Like, I, I know, like, you go on the liquid diet to reduce the size of your liver. I don't have fat on my liver. I don't have a fatty liver. Um, they already determined that. So I think it's more so to get your body fat down in general and to make sure, like, your stomach's clear. Because if they're ripping through a stomach that has, like, three-day-old food in it, it's not going to go well. The surgery's not going to go well. So um, as it only being, like, day six, I'm not too worried about how bad I'm following the directions on this thing. Uh, like they said, they want you to get your protein in. In my opinion, the best way for me to get my protein in is through cream of chicken soup. So, I don't know. I'll do better for the next week just to make sure I am, like, tip-top for my surgery next, the following week. Um, so here's a bit of a tidbit of a rant. Uh, there was this article that, like, spammers post on the Facebook group. And they're terrible. They really are. Like, one, it seemed like they obviously used old procedures. It obviously was in, like, England somewhere because they used stone instead of pound. Um, and I think... I think one stone is, like, 20 pounds. I think... Um, something like that so uh there's that and the nurse like even though she was trying to advocate for people getting this surgery it didn't come out until like the end it kind of felt like she was de demeaning more so than you know like oh they're getting this you know, with, like, the way she worded it was just really bad. And I don't know if it was the actual nurse or the writer who kind of made it sound like, oh, God. <laughs> and let me let me give you an example of what I mean. Um, she was uh, talking about all these super-duper obese people, like, because she works in the super-duper obese department. She didn't say super-duper, but, you know, she's like, these people are ginormous. <laughs> And so she was like, when we had to roll the guy on his side, I didn't think the 
bar on the bed would suffice. I thought it would give out and he'd crush me. Like, really? If you're that terrified of your job, bye. Like, <laughs> you know, maybe it's time to switch to a different ward or go to the other end of bariatrics where the not so huge people are. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, all right, these people feel bad enough that they have to get this surgery. And it wasn't until the end where she was even made a point to make it sound, you know, this is why, you know, this is why the surgery is good. And it wasn't necessarily geared towards, you know, the person's going to live a healthier life. They're going to love their bodies. You know, it, it's hot. The program's hard to get through. You know, she did mention those, but she made it sound so mean. Like, how would you feel if, <laughs> you know, you had to change your whole diet just to and eat like a chicken <laughs> after eating like a fat person <laughs> like like okay <laughs> um so in the end it was like her friend was like well this surgery is pointless and she's trying to explain to her friend that it's not because um it helps the meta the, her main point wasn't towards people living a healthier life it was the medical industry doesn't have to shell out all this money to pay for insulin and you know, people who have heart problems, whatever, because they're obese. You know, now they spend eight to ten thousand dollars on a simple surgery, uh, and bam, all those medical charges that these companies are shelling out to pay for your prescriptions and provide you with this, these medications, they don't have to do it anymore because you got that surgery that was a lot cheaper. All right. <laughs> and, you know, she even made a point to put it in there that, like, one out of 200 people die because of clot. And, and I know I'm, like, repeating this to you guys. Like, here, scary. I'm just, I mean, yeah, I mean, I know the risks. I understand the risks. They told us the risks. You know, as an article, though, it's like you read it and you're like... That is scary. Yeah, thanks. That just makes me not want to get the surgery sometimes, you know? And her whole point of the article was to talk about why people get it in the first place. Um, and it, it was titled, The Scary Truth About Weight Loss Surgery. I'm like, yeah, that would be a scary truth. But the whole demeanor of the article was supposed to be about why. So here's my take on why people get this surgery and why it's beneficial and why it's hard and not easy. Like people say, it's the easy way out. It's not. You are this obese person. You have tried everything. You've tried changing your diet and then falling back because of depression or whatever. You know, partner who likes to eat out a lot refusing to change with you. Or you have a serious food addiction, like I'm pretty sure all of us do. You've tried exercising and you've gotten so far and you hit that wall and you keep trying and trying until you can't try anymore and you fall back and gain it back. And that's when you're like, okay, enough is enough. What are my other options? For me, it took a while for me to come to that point, like my other options are. <laughs> You know, I briefly thought about surgery and I didn't want to do it. I didn't know much about it. So before I even talked to my doctor and I decided it's something I might want to do, I researched it. And I YouTubed videos like crazy. And the first one I watched was of a gastric bypass being done. And I know some people probably get really grossed out. But for me, it wasn't like that. I was like, oh, that's really like a simple surgery as far as like from a surgical standpoint, you know, how they go in and staple and cut and staple and cut and reroute and staple and cut. And it's just so simple. And I see why it only takes like 30 minutes to an hour for most people to get this surgery done. Like, okay. So now I went up forward to see other people and see what they went through and watched one woman in particular go from just about 300 pounds down to like 150 and she was able to run. 
never was would she ever imagined of being able to run unless it was for her life. <laughs> I'm like, I want to run. I mean, I don't have the body for it. Not saying as fat wise. I mean, I am skinny. I was built to be skinny. Um, she never thought of running. So, and now she does. She runs marathons all the time. Good for her. It's great. Good exercise. She has the energy to do that now. Um, so yeah, you come to that point, the conclusion that yes, this is something you want to get into. So then you start your six month journey, which it is for most of us, like a six month journey. Not everyone does a journey. <laughs> Some people go from, I want weight loss surgery to like a few days later being on the table, you know, um, good for them. But, uh, I've also learned they have the most struggles when you don't do a program such as uh, one woman, serious partier. She did lose a lot of weight from the surgery, but she learned that she could get hammered off a shot and then became addicted to alcohol. So, you know, there poses a risk of becoming an alcoholic. Um, she didn't have the right situation where she had the support. She didn't have the classes to, you know, guide her through on what to eat, what not to eat. So she became addicted to alcohol and is in a facility to come over that addiction. So it's like moving from one addiction to the next, which I can relate and in my best friend. She went from, you know, being a party kind of girl, an addict uh, of drugs, um, to going away for it, coming back, and she, even though she wasn't hooked on drugs anymore, she became an alcoholic, hardcore party alcoholic, and that was scary to watch, because she was my best friend, and I mean, she still is, we've had her ups and downs, but she is still considered one of my best friends, I love her to death, and now she's a mom, and she put all that shit behind, so... You know, sometimes it's growing up is what takes, having a kid is what it takes. So, uh, there's that. So, you're in this program, you have to learn how to change your entire eating habit, your whole diet. And that's hard for someone who's used to, like, eating out, eating whatever they want. Um, eating, eating, eating. That's, that's our life become our lifestyle. Um, he, like for me, I work at a grocery store and I see the younger people or whatever um, pick up a bag of chips and a candy bar and not gain a pound. And that's hard to watch because if I did that, I'd be messing up my diet. I'd be gaining more because, you know, that's just how it's been. With a limit of 1,800 calories to maintain your weight, you're probably consuming 2,000 to 2,000 and a half calories, and you're gaining it. Dropping all that down to 1,500 calories or less a day, that's hard. Going from eating a whole bowl of spaghetti to like something that big, that's hard. It makes you feel like you're hungry and worthless and helpless and, you know, and you're going through your body image like, man, I'm just fat and I'm always going to be fat. And you have identity issues. Like, you, you aren't this fat person, but then again, you kind of are because you got this food addiction issue. So you go through the six-month journey. They teach you what to eat, what not to eat, how to eat it. Uh, drinking water 30 minutes before eating, stopping 30 minutes after. Uh, that's different. That's complicated. Having to eat like that? I mean, I choke on bread sometimes just because I eat too fast. <laughs> or I take too big of a bite. Um, so you're learning to chew your food now. Um, so you don't choke and die. <laughs> So there's that, and then you start losing weight here and there, and you try to become more active, 
which I know I said, oh, I'm going to exercise, and so I'm going to exercise. I hate exercise, and I have no energy for it. I do enough work at work <laughs> to be exercising. Um, so, you know, you still struggle, but you get there. You get to that goal, and you feel so good after the six months, and you hit your weight goal for surgery, and you're like, finally. Finally, I could start my life. And then you got to go on this two-week liquid diet before and you start losing weight and you feel great and you're thinking, man, if I can lose weight like this and not get this surgery or risk getting all that weight back, you would totally do it all the time, I'm sure. Like, but then, you, you know, if without having the surgery in mind, the mindset would be like, oh, I'll just have a sandwich just once, you know, and, and then I'll go right back into the diet. But then it's like, but then you're just going to have a sandwich every day <laughs> eventually. And then it's going to be more than once a day. It's going to be all the time, you know. And that's the thing. It's like this surgery, you're getting prepped. This is what you've been working for, to get down to whatever weight they set for you, to be able to get the surgery in the first place, to make it this far, to get through psych, to get through the nutritionist, to get through the bariatric team, to get this surgery. And you don't want to put that on the line. So you work through and do this liquid diet for 14 days. I know some do it longer, some do it shorter. Um, and then you do it for after, but thinking after it's got, definitely gonna be easier. And that's the thing, it's like, it's gonna be harder to eat afterwards. It's gonna be hard. You're gonna try to fit your liquids in and your proteins in, and it's gonna be a challenge, which is, totally different for you but you're gonna kind of feel great about it because you're gonna lose the weight and it comes ex food becomes exciting again in a sense it, not to the point where you're like oh my god I'm gonna overeat but it's like oh so this is what normal people feel like when they eat <laughs> um, you know you move on to those mushy foods it's like yes yeah, mushy foods um, so once you can start eat it's almost like eating real food you know <laughs> I haven't gotten there yet, so I'm only speaking from, like, what I hear from other people. Um, but it's, like, and then just being full after a bite or two, like, that's got to feel good. I mean, sure, not everyone feels full after a bite or two, but knowing that you're not going to gain a bunch of weight from eating something, <laughs> yeah, it feels good. And then you you move on to being able to eat whole foods eventually, and... Um, then you, you watch, that's where you watch what you eat, but your stomach will totally tell you that, no, you can't eat that, or you're going to puke or have diarrhea or both, you know, and you eat too much, you're going to explode. <laughs> so it kind of, it triggers something in you to be like, you got to chew your food. You can't have that. You can't have that much of that. <laughs> You know, stuff like that. And it's like, it's perfect. It's exactly what it's supposed to do. And then you can get more active. Once you start losing the weight, you're probably going to have more energy. Most people do, and I'm sure I will. I notice even now, even though I'm exhausted because the, the liquid diet has taken so much out of me. Um, like the headaches were bad. I was tired all the time. I'm slowly getting bursts of energy. And it's really, really great. I'm actually enjoying the fact that I have energy. I'm not saying I'm going to go work out, but at least I don't feel the need to sit on the couch all day. I feel like I can walk around the house a little bit, do some cleaning, do some homework, you know, s stuff that I normally don't have the energy to do. I can do at work even. I would get bursts of energy and be like, okay, I can't keep standing here all day. I got to go do something. Um... Not that I always like to do something at my job. <laughs> Sometimes I do like standing there, even though I'm antsy as ever, but you know, I get moving. Get moving. That's pretty big to get moving. Um, so yeah, for, for some people, it may be like they have a bunch of medical problems. They have diabetes and they want to get off the insulin. They want to get healthy. And for me, it's... I don't have any of those issues. I have a dead kidney and spina bifida that 
for me, it's like, I want to lose weight so I don't get to that point. Because I'll be devastated if I ever let myself. I'm surprised I let myself get to 230 pounds. Let alone I could someday maybe get diabetes or have heart failure and heart issues. So, you know, it's it's big. And with only one kidney, I'm just bettering my chance of being able to survive that way by getting the surgery. I've let it go too far as it is, and I know if I continue like that, I definitely gain more. It's it's not a joke. I probably would become huge er. <laughs> you know. So for me, how I'd conclude this whole ordeal is when the day comes, people say enough is enough. They can no longer live with their body image. They decide to make the change that's actually going to be effective. Because before so many changes that they've made in the past never worked out. And this is the tool for them that will allow them to diet and will allow them to exercise and not only take off the weight, but keep it off with little failure. And they become a healthier person. They become more normalized in today's society. But the fact that this woman wrote and just how she wrote about people who are obese and it's like it's not their fault. It is an accountability in a sense for them on one hand. But it's not. I mean, do you think I want to be fat? Do you think I want to feel hungry all the time? No. None of us do. And it was just pretty sad reading this spam article that someone posted. So rude. And yeah, there's risks. But to make a better life for yourself, you have to take the risk. Shove it in your back pocket, pray to God, hope for the best, whatever you gotta do. And I think the complications of surgery lessen with the more knowledge that the surgeons gain by doing more surgeries. You know, throwing a blood clot, that can happen to anybody in any surgery. Just about any death-related issues could happen to anybody in any surgery. Not just weight loss surgery. Definitely not just weight loss surgery. So, that article can go to hell where it belongs. It's like, do your own research. You don't have to listen to that article. Ask your local nutritionist bariatric team. They'll tell you. They won't hold anything back. They'll tell you the good, the bad, the ugly. But they definitely say the good outweigh the bad. Definitely. Um, so Monday, I'm getting my pre-surgical testing. I'll have a video then of what's going on. I know I kind of ramble on and lose track here and there. I do it all the time, and I apologize every video for my ramblings. I don't expect anybody to listen to everything, but uh, if you did, thanks. Uh, thanks for watching, as always, and I'll be seeing you.